Good evening. It's roughly about eight o'clock. Um, we're about an hour off sunset, an hour and a half maybe, and it's a lovely, lovely evening. See the birds tweeting their beaks off. So we've done quite a bit of exploring about the subject of the constellations and their connection with tree geometry. Um, Bearing that information in mind, um, we'll revisit that subject later. So this evening, I'm going to go into the forest over there, which is the area I call Ahochida's Forest. It's where her and Edgar made their presence felt. And we will, um, I want to have a chatter about energy. So if you'd like to pick that bag up with all the goodies in, you carry that and I'll just saunter off at my own leisure. <laughs> Today, I've got some pecans, which I'll pop up there. Then I've got some almonds, put them aside. Then I've got some cashew nuts. These are cashew nuts. I'll lay those on there. And then, what are these? These are Brazil nuts. I'll put those up on there. And then, this is the peanut butter. I'm going to pop that in that little hole there. Um, I've also got a mango and some apples, which I'll hang from the trees round about. Um, what I will do is I will just light the little incense sticks. It was quite an art to get in here. I came in a different way just to make it shorter route. And there must have been half a dozen trees down. And the <laughs> there's also a lot of uh, rose thorns. And they whipped back against my leg, and I'm, my leg's full of thorns now. So, um, words of an Anglo Saxon nature were said, shall we say. So, I'll just put these around one there, one there, and one there. These are just for our forest friends and their friends who may wish to. Uh, to be uh, take part in this. Right, let me put the apples up. Okay, so I have a mango there. Um, the apples here. Gotta be careful, the sun is just off here and I don't want to bleach the film out. And that's all our goodies here. So it's a lovely, lovely evening in the forest and I think we're going to make our way in this direction. So first of all, I wanted to mention um, a lot of you have asked me if I ever hear tree knocks and yes, I have heard one or two, but that's it, nothing really massive. If if I was to look on the ground 
and find a suitable stick to wallop a tree with. Let's just say it was something like this. But if I was to pick that up and hit, okay, tree, this particular tree, that would just either shatter or it would become, sometimes the wood is very, very soggy. Our trees are not dry enough in order to do this. What I wanted to say was, I believe that when you guys walk through your forest and you may find trees with sizable, shall we say, sizable sticks propped up against them. Well, my theory is that that stick belongs to that tree. It may not come from that tree, but that stick, that limb, has the correct tambra to hit that tree with. And so when they use that particular limb against the tree, it will have resonating sound that will be heard a long way. So if you were to imagine a luthier um, who makes a, a, a luthier is it comes from the word a lute to make a lute um, it's a guitar maker a wooden instrument maker so it would be an acoustic wooden instrument a guitar a violin of that nature so when you have a luthier who is making their instrument they pick up different types of wood that they would use whether it's maple or whatever particular wood of choice they have and they would sort of ping it with their fingers and listen to the sound it makes like a church bell so if you were to use a hammer on a bell, it would, go, it would resonate. It would go ping. Well, wood does the same. It has a timbre. And I think that that's exactly what Bigfoot do. They take these specific limbs that are propped up against the trees, which they will have chosen specifically, and they will have a particular sound, and they know that that sound carries then when it, that sound of that limb against that particular tree, the sound will carry. So when they are using that, and they'll have these placed all around the forest, so whichever route or path they're taking, they can, just if they are in trouble or need to signal home for whatever reason, when right here... We have what I would call stickery. It's certainly not a limb that would be big enough to resonate against a tree. That's no thicker than my finger. Something that we have here in the United Kingdom, all our pine trees, they, they are a crop here. This is a crop. It's a plantation. It's planted for money by the Forestry Commission. And it's not suitable for building houses, it's softwood. When you get up into Scandinavia, they get the really cold, dry forests. And the rings, if you look at the rings on a sawn tree, they're much, much closer because they're much drier. And the wood is much better, much better quality. Here, it's not so good quality. I think our wood is very suitable for pulp and that sort of stuff. Um, paper products rather than uh, like house building cabin stuff so let's for example take a pretty good limb this size now uh, if i was let's take for example a pretty good limb this size so if i was to put my hand up against that you'll get an idea of the size of it okay now if if it wasn't attached to a whole tree, <laughs> which it is, um, and I was to, shall we say, choose 
an unfortunate tree, and this tree, say, would be the unfortunate tree, to wallop it, uh, tree knock, um, and see what what returned. Now, something about knocking trees, you have to know what you're saying. Does anybody know what the knocks mean? Because I believe that all of these knocks will be local. So the family here, for example, will have their own language of knocks, like a Morse code. But that might not be the same knocks that a family, for example, if you could see through the trees here, <laughs> way over there, there's forests way over there, goes on for miles beyond that field. If you could see those people and go over there and use tree knocks in their forest, my guess is their sounds, their tree knocks, will be completely different. Their Morse code, if you like, will be different to the family over here. So when we see people on the TV, um, we all know which programmes they are, and they're whooping, screaming and hollering really, really loud, and then they're walloping trees, doing tree knocks. It's laughable. It's absolutely laughable. They have no idea what they're saying. They could be signalling to a big male, come and get me, I'm ready. <laughs> you know, they have no idea what they're signalling. And then we have to take a thought for the tree. I mean, this poor tree here might think if it's being walloped, by a limb, it might take a huge offence and say, how very dare you, how dare you hit me with that insignificant limb. We have no idea. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm saying this in, a, in lightened terms, but tree walloping, tree knocking, you've got to know what you're saying. And if you don't know what you're saying, you could be asking for anything. So there's something else that I want to say in here as well while I'm here. Is if I understood tree knocks, we would do it, but I don't. So I'm not going to try saying things that I don't understand. It is also why I have never attempted to recreate the glyphs on the ground even just to show you, because unless you know what you're saying, unless you know what they mean, you don't know what kind of energy that they utilise or what you're calling upon, really. So, with all that in mind, energy. Now, before I came out here today, I asked the people, because periodically... I get um, EVPs, for want of a better word, on, on the videos. When I'm listening to them, as I'm editing them, I pick up strange words. And sometimes they're just too quick and I just cannot get them at all. Other times it is quite clear. And, well, I have asked the people today that if they wish to, to insert some EVPs on this and see if I can pick it up. I'll run it through spectral layers. I'll run it through there and see if I can isolate it and pick out what they are. So today, we've given our food over in that direction, um, some gifting over there. So, energy. Um, and energy fields. I want to revisit that in a way because if you are going out to try and find the Zanu people, you need to have a, a clue about how you stand, um, how you're going to locate them. So my guess is that pretty much most people will go with camouflage gear on. They may, may even cover themselves in deer pee. Um, they might even put 
camouflage paint on their face. Well, if you're hunting for deer, that might be a really fantastic idea. But if you're hunting for Bigfoot, they're going to spot you a mile away. It doesn't matter whether you're clothed or whether you're in bright orange kit or whether you are the stealthiest, quietest person on the planet. It won't matter to them. Now, why I say that, first of all, we all have we all have energy, an energy field, and there's several different types of energy fields. So you've got um, electromagnetics, uh, sound. Now, sound is a fascinating form of energy. Um, we're going to go into sonics a bit. Um, chemicals chemicals that's within the body, chemicals out externally, electrical, uh, nuclear, um, thermal energy, yep, thermal energy, and um, mechanical, mechanical energy. So they're different types of energy as well. So then you have the human dimensions of energy. So you'd have uh, a physical energy. So that is like quantity the quantity of energy then you'd have an emotional energy which is about the quality the quality of your energy then you would have mental energy which is about your focus your focus on energy and then a spiritual energy which is really a force the force of energy I'm losing the sunlight a bit here <laughs> um, so energy systems within our body and surrounding our body um, if you think about people for within our body if you think about people who are involved with reiki um, reflexology that's another one or they use stones or acupuncture they're moving energy and utilizing the energy uh, within our bodies so um, I'll just put this focus onto the trees because it's really nice over there. So in 1780, the Parisians, they believed that they could cure illnesses by magnetism, magnetism within the body. So they would sit in groups um, around a tub that would contain mesmerized water. And within that water, there would be iron filings and all of this was by a doctor um his name I think, what was his name dr france france mesmer hence the name mesmerized so the the body apparently would uh, would would supposedly re respond to the iron filings and the magnetism and there is some truth in it but i'm not sure how effective that was and whether it was just a french fad which it may well have been. So what I wanted to show this evening was energetic fields. Don't you love those shadows? Aren't they beautiful? So let's take some trees. We're going to take this tree because it looks particularly gorgeous. So imagine this tree here, okay? And then we're going to go to this tree here. We're going to call them tree one, tree two, and tree three. Now, each one of those trees has an energy field. So there would be rings around it of energy. So each one of these trees would have rings of energy. I'll try and do you a description so you can see. And I'll just put that image up now. So you can see what I mean. Then if I place us as a human being, okay, I'm going to put though the human being beside the trees. And we have an energy field around us. So each one of these trees in this forest here that you see, they have all got energy fields around them. But the forest as a whole has an energy field around it. So not only are there lots of little energy fields. So just imagine a coil around the tree, each tree. 
and then imagine the whole forest being surrounded by a huge coil. Imagine a human being to be surrounded by a coil. So imagine me, the human being, and I am surrounded by a coil of energy, and I walk into this forest. Each As I pass each tree, my energy field is going to bump into the energy field of this tree. Okay, and I'm coming closer to this one. And I now trigger the energy field on this tree. But the whole forest that has this energy field around it, it's all been disturbed because there's a different energy moving around it, which is my energy. And that's what happens when you walk into the forest. And you think you've got your camouflage gear, you've got your deer pee, you've got all your night vision stuff, all of this kit you're trying to hide from Bigfoot. But what Bigfoot actually feels before he sees anything, because they feel energy, the first thing that they feel is the energy field, the frequency. The frequency of the forest has changed. Something is different. So they'll recognise exactly what something small, like a rabbit is, or a fox, coyote, whatever. But if a bear was to walk into it, that would have a really big, really big frequency. So they would recognise that as well. And if a human being has it, we've all got a distinct signature. So, and each one of those signatures, or like a thumbprint of energy, is individual to each one of us. But they can tell by the vibration of that frequency, whether it's a little small critter running around the floor, the ground, or whether it is a big bear, or whether it's a human. And now, if you were to carry a gun with you, that will also... That will also have an energy field. It will also have a certain frequency which it emits. And which when, if you imagine a bat sending out frequency, sending out sonar, that's what we do as human beings, living things. That's what these trees do all the time. They're sending out energy. I mean, it may alarm people to know, but from one leaf of a tree, an ordinary tree, you can get 150 volts of power. The ground is full of energy, full of scalar energy, if you like, and it's learning how to harness all of that. So that was what I wanted to talk to you today about. It's no use, all of us, creeping around the forests in our gear. What we need to be doing is approaching the forest, asking permission, first of all, if we may go in, you can read energy. If you go to a forest and you say, is it okay if I can come in? It'll feel right or it'll feel wrong. And just be respectful. Now, I'm not saying that Bigfoot isn't going to come and chase you out because I think they're going to kick some big butt. If they have a female within their group that is pregnant with child, you will be chased, absolutely chased. If they have small little ones, you will be chased. Just imagine in your own home. Just imagine yourself sitting there with your wife, who is, in human terms, say seven months pregnant. You've got a little baby, 18-month-old and a three-month-old, and someone came barging into your house or even onto your property, into your yard, with a gun. Uh, whacking trees, <laughs> whooping, you'd be pretty annoyed. You'd absolutely chase them. You'd get up out of your chair and you would give them holy hell. Bigfoot's no different. He's going to protect his family. And that's exactly what he will do. So just bear that in mind. And stay safe. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, it's been a gorgeous evening. And... Last night was quite cold. It was 5 degrees C, which is about 35 Fahrenheit. But it's been getting up to 16 and 17 during the daytime, which that's not bad. That's not bad at all, which is around about 65 uh, Fahrenheit. So hopefully the spring, the warmer weather is on its way and it's staying light quite late now. Um, 
usually in the summer it'll stay light to about half ten, eleven o'clock over here. So uh, we'll be able to come out in the evening and get these lovely evening shadows. So thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye for now. We're just losing the colour from the sunset now. grouse and pheasant, some little birds with an evening song. Seven four seven going into Edinburgh, I would say. Edinburgh Airport's not far away. It's just in that direction. Glasgow Airport is in that direction. And America is in that direction. <laughs>